Fetterman Nazi! Opening your eyes to the lines of social justice. What up, party people? Into place to be. It's your boy, Feminazi. Okay, that doesn't really work for this kind of video. This is my first video after a long hiatus, and I wasn't going to do any more videos. I actually had a final episode recorded up. It was, you know, just the usual be good to each other type of thing. What has changed? What has inspired me to come back and make more of these social commentary videos is the incident in Charlottesville, Virginia. I am on Twitter right now watching a shitstorm develop. It's been going on all day, and I've not really had a lot of time to keep tabs on it, but from what I can gather, there was some sort of rally called Unite the Right that was permitted by the city. It, they actually were holding a permit to have their rally. And they were supposed to have the rally today, which is a Saturday, August 12th, at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. There was a situation where the city tried to revoke their permit, and they went to court to get a preliminary injunction to have their permit reinstated, um, because it was being pulled on the basis of what they were saying. It's very interesting what happened after that, because we have a situation where a rally that, yeah, there's a lot of white people involved, and... It very much is a backlash rally to things like the Black Lives Matter riots, Berkeley, Ferguson, you name it. It basically is a, we're fed up with being told that we're pieces of trash just because of our race and perhaps our gender, because a lot of it was white men. The people who are the only group, be it by race, by gender, the only group that is totally okay and even fashionable to say very bad things about they got fed up with it, and they had a rally. They had a rally to counter-protest all of the things that have been going on. We've seen a rise in largely so-called left-leaning rallies. Um, they're not very nice. Uh, there's a lot of property destruction, a lot of violence, um, cars being set on fire, businesses being destroyed. There's a whole lot of bad stuff that goes on at so-called protests, you know, blocking the highways, and it's always Black Lives Matter and this newer um, thing that has come to dominance called Antifa, which supposedly stands for anti-fascists, but the reality is that they are fascists in and of themselves. So they're holding this rally at 12 o'clock, and they had sort of a pregame thing the night before, a bunch of people walking two by two in a line with torches. Um, I saw someone refer to it as, like, the great citronella w coming of 2017, uh, not a mosquito for miles, which was pretty hilarious. But they did that last night, and I don't know if the people involved are white supremacists or not. First of all, I can't get into their heads. And second of all, a lot of the video is kind of difficult to really make out what's going on. The problem with a lot of this is that... You have groups and you have individuals, and you can't really judge individuals by the group. Group dynamics are a weird thing, and they tend to go towards the lowest common denominator. If someone's acting out in a group, you don't necessarily have the ability to make all of those people stop acting out. There might have been some KKK people in there, there might not have, I don't know. But what's inspired me to make this video is that I am seeing a couple of very troublesome things out there. The first is, if you go to Twitter right now, and you punch up the Charlottesville hashtag, Charlottesville is where this whole thing is going down as I speak, you get nothing but one-sided rhetoric. Um, all it is is calling people white supremacists and labeling it all hate and condemning it. You've got Bernie Sanders saying the white nationalist demonstration in Charlottesville is a reprehensible display of racism and hatred that has no place in our society. Here's my question. How do you know that this is a white supremacist or white nationalist demonstration? What makes it that? And the more I thought about this, the more troubled I started to become. Because I realized that you don't have to be a white supremacist in this society, to be treated like a white supremacist. 
You just have to have enough other people saying you're a white supremacist, and it becomes true. At least for the purposes of how society comes at you, it becomes the truth. And so I'm looking at this feed, the top posts for Charlottesville hashtag on Twitter, and all I see is white supremacist, hate. You know, here, I'm going to scroll down a bit. Uh, Joe Biden, uh, racism and hate have no place here. Uh, Bill Clinton, even as we protect free speech and assembly, we must condemn hatred, violence, and white supremacy. So, from what I can tell, nothing was violent until Antifa protesters showed up and started confronting the so-called white nationalists, white supremacists, whatever you want to call them. There wasn't a problem until Antifa showed up and made a problem. They started the violence. I actually watched about 30 minutes of a live stream um, that had been recorded last night of the marching part with the torches. And from what I could tell, there wasn't anybody doing anything violent. There, there was a little bit of boisterousness. You really can't expect there to be anything else during some gathering like this. But you didn't have people getting assaulted. You didn't have any kind of major unrest. Most of it was pretty orderly. You know, by giant crowd standards, things were quite orderly. Um, they kept in line, and they didn't antagonize people too much. There were a couple of people who looked kind of pissed off on the sidelines, and they got egged on a bit. But there were no violent clashes for a long time uh, until the Antifa people showed up and decided to start the violence. Now, here's the problem. They had gotten a permit. The permit was revoked. The permit was put back into effect by a judge who said, you can't revoke this permit just because you decide you don't like what they have to say. They have a right to free speech. Here's the problem with that. Your right to free speech ends once the violence begins, or at least that's the way it seems to work, because when Antifa came in and started to provoke and attack the people who were in this Unite the Right rally, whether they're white supremacists or not, external forces came in and started assaulting them. They started fights. At that point, riot police were called in. Riot police were called in, and the protest was deemed unlawful. It was called an unlawful gathering and everybody was required to leave. Now, keep in mind, they have a permit from the city that a judge has forced to stay in effect. So all you have to do if you don't like what's going on is show up and start beating the shit out of people. And, oh, hey, you know that lawful gathering that you had permits for that a judge said you could totally do? Well, you can't do it anymore because someone else showed up and started throwing punches. It gets even more fun because now we've got... The violence was started by Antifa. The people are labeled white nationalists and white supremacists, even though the evidence is kind of sketchy. And someone has died as a result of this violence. You have a permitted, a city-permitted and judge-approved gathering that has been shut down. Now, let's go a step further. <laughs> yes, the rabbit hole goes deeper. Another thing that bothers me greatly is that I have noticed an interesting batch of pictures posted to Twitter to support the narrative that these people are white nationalists, white supremacists, and associated with the Ku Klux Klan. I've seen pictures of people throwing Nazi symbols, throwing the Nazi salute out there. Now, what's very interesting is that I did a little digging on some of these symbols, on some of these photographs, the things that are being posted... And it turns out there was a Ku Klux Klan rally in the same area, or I, I'm guessing it's the same area, and but, there are pictures from the KKK rally that was before the Unite the Right rally, way before, like weeks. There are pictures from the KKK rally being posted as if they are from the Unite the Right rally to support the narrative of white supremacism. So in review, we have a bunch of white men who gather, predominantly white men anyway, and who are not being violent, who are peaceably assembling, they are attacked, violence is committed against them by Antifa after they have to fight to keep their permit because the city tries to shut them down preemptively. They get attacked by Antifa, and, and a bunch of pictures are posted to Twitter to support the narrative that they're white nationalists and white supremacists and KKK members that are from a KKK rally, not from this one. 
Then, an Antifa guy drives through a crowd of them and kills someone. Let's see. Uh, and Oh, but here, here's the fun part. We still have the top posts on Twitter being nothing but big shots saying, all these white nationalists are not okay. Hate speech is not okay. This should be condemned universally. You are all bad people. Blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, as it turns out, most of the narrative is false. But this is the thing. It doesn't matter whether they're lying or not because people believe it and because large corporations like Twitter that want to maintain a certain narrative have the power to do so. Now, my Twitter account is probably not the kind that if they showed me tailored stuff that they would be showing me things like Bernie Sanders saying white nationalism demonstration is a reprehensible display. Because I have a lot of people who don't all think in the same way in my follows. And yet, th this is it. You know, the narrative is established. What are you going to do? What are you going to do about this? What is anyone going to do about this? The narrative is there. The narrative is not changeable. Because no matter what the truth is, Bill Clinton and Bernie Sanders, what they say on Twitter, that's what's in the top posts. That's what you're going to hear. All you're going to hear is things like, oh, they didn't bring out tanks for this, but they brought tanks out for Ferguson. Well, Ferguson had riots. You know, this never became a riot situation. You didn't have mass destruction going on. This was a peaceable assembly that was disrupted by violent third parties. You can't even compare the two things. But it, it just blows my mind. It absolutely doesn't fit within my thick skull. How in the hell is it possible that the truth is completely different than what everybody believes. Sometimes I wonder if I'm the only sane person on the planet. Anyway, the narrative is there. The narrative is locked. The media will work in lockstep with the narrative. What's the truth? Who fucking cares? Truth doesn't matter in this day and age. All that matters is the narrative. If you say something is the way that you want it to be enough times, it becomes true in the minds of the people. Now, before I close, I'd like to make it very clear. Despite the fact that I seem to have a lot of so-called conservative beliefs, I am far from a conservative. I am very much a liberal person. I have no problem with people being gay as fuck. I have no problem whatsoever with people wanting to be their own person. You do you. That is totally cool. I have no problem with people being themselves. I have no problem with people saying shit that I really, really don't agree with. But I do have a problem with them lying. I have a problem with the concept of hate speech because hate speech has become whatever I don't like. Hate speech is a nebulous term, just like obscenity. I remember when the thing was obscenity. You know, what is obscenity? Well, obscenity is, I don't know, I can't tell you, but I know it when I see it. Same thing with hate speech. Hate speech is highly subjective. But if we're going to come up with this criterion called hate speech, and we're going to use that to shut people up, well, who controls what's hate speech? Who decides that? And this is why the whole idea of hate speech is a problem, and why this narrative being pushed that is objectively false, it's just not good. Wake the fuck up. All these so-called woke people, they're the problem. They're not woke if anything, they're sleeping and listening to what other people are saying and repeating it mindlessly. But it's going to become the truth in the minds of the people. At some point, the machine will steamroll you. You can't hold it back forever. As your numbers dwindle, you will get run over. Jesus fucking Christ, I sound like Alex Jones or something. But this is what I'm talking about. You know, for someone who is as libertarian as I am, and I mean classical libertarian, I'm talking freedom... This just blows my mind. You people need to wake the fuck up. You need to do something different than what you're doing. You shouldn't let the top trending shit on Twitter be the narrative that is objectively false without something. You need to do something. I've been thinking about what to do and I haven't come up with an answer yet, but I've got some ideas and maybe I can touch on those in a future video. For now, this is the startlingly depressed feminazi signing off and saying, don't be a dick and don't let them get away with it. Have a good one.